On February 15, 1943, a girl named Griselda is born in the city of Cartagena, Colombia. Griselda Blanco. When Griselda reaches the age of five, Colombia is engulfed in civil war, and Griselda and her family are forced to flee their city and move to Medellin, located south of Cartagena. The entire country is in turmoil, and Griselda is growing up in a violent environment where fear rules everyone's lives. In this savage setting, humans are also growing up in a different way. Children of this era are forming the first drug cartels in Colombia. Little is known about Griselda's childhood, but it is known that she is growing up in Medellin, a city where even the police dare not set foot. It is a city full of homelessness, prostitutes, drug traffickers, and insecurity. Griselda Blanco herself describes it as a place where she was sexually assaulted by her mother's boyfriend at the age of 13. Griselda always sought an opportunity to escape from this environment. And finally, at the age of 19, she does it. Griselda is a 19-year-old girl, but don't think for a moment that she behaves like a typical 19-year-old. Violence consumes her entire being, and you cannot look at her without feeling a sense of anger. There is no specific evidence, but some of those who have written about her life say that this violent behavior was present even in her childhood home, where she would harm others. For this reason, she would rob a wealthy child in Medellin and take them to a secluded place to murder them, as if she wanted to satisfy herself. However, there is no concrete evidence regarding these claims. Only a few writers have written about it. Some say that because she was so violent, she later gained notoriety. These stories have been fabricated to portray her as violent since childhood. In any case, we are not concerned with the killings before or after. We are dealing with an extremely violent woman. We are talking about the 1960s, a time when women were not taken seriously in these matters. Griselda knew that if she wanted to assert herself among all these tough men, she had to be twice as tough as them. During this time, Griselda meets a man named Carlos Trujillo, who is involved in human trafficking. He would transport people who paid him from Colombia to America. Griselda gets involved in this illegal activity and excels at it to the point where she can create fake American passports. Of course, passports in the 1960s were much simpler than they are now, without all the security measures we have today. But for that time, it was a significant accomplishment, and it boosted their business. Griselda would create passports while Carlos handled the rest of the operations. As time passed, Griselda and Carlos become parents to three children. However, Carlos suddenly develops liver failure and dies. And everyone knew that this woman had poisoned him. But they were too afraid to accuse her because they knew Griselda was far more violent than Carlos. They feared a woman who was 152 centimeters tall, about five feet. And if you didn't know her, you would think she was a caring mother with three children. Those who knew her had given her the nickname Black Widow. The Black Widow is the name of a venomous and dangerous spider. Griselda was never satisfied with her position and wanted to become the boss of all cartels and traffickers, stronger than anyone else. She knew that to achieve this goal, she needed to find a powerful husband who could help her rise faster. That's why she becomes acquainted with a gangster more famous than herself, named Alberto Bravo. Alberto Bravo tells Griselda that she should aim higher and asks, why settle for less? America is not short of opportunities. There are much easier things we can send to America, like cocaine. From that point on, Griselda becomes involved in cocaine trafficking. Many people think that the cocaine capital of the world is Miami, Florida. But during Pablo Escobar's era, that title was given to Medellin, Colombia. During the 1970s, when Griselda is involved in cocaine trafficking, it is being distributed from Colombia to New York. Her previous experience in human trafficking to America makes it easier for her to send cocaine as well. She would hire model-like women and hide cocaine in their clothes. She would also provide them with fake passports and send them to New York without much trouble. Cocaine was being smuggled into New York's airport and Griselda's contacts in the city were selling the cocaine. This was the first time a smuggler was using this method to send drugs to America. At a time when Pablo Escobar, the biggest drug trafficker in history, was ruling and driving around in Medellin, Griselda Blanco was making $10 million a week. Slowly, the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration, in the United States, 
began to wonder why so much cocaine was entering New York. They started investigating and interrogating every smuggler they caught or had in custody. But none of them had the courage to mention Griselda's name. The fear she had instilled in New York and throughout America was immense. At this time, Griselda was a powerful and intimidating drug lord sitting in Colombia. However, she could travel to any American city at any moment, each time with a different passport because she was a passport forger herself. And it was these actions that led to the passports becoming stricter and more secure. She had around 100 safety measures in place. She spent a few months each year in New York, which was quite a feat for a smuggler, considering the difficulty of entering such an important city in a country without a passport or residency, while also taking away millions of dollars from the city every week. During this time, Griselda was at the peak of her power, with no rival who could even come close, except for that young man who used to steal cars in Colombia and now wanted to make Griselda's life a living hell. If Pablo Escobar wanted to grow, he had to enter Griselda's territory. It was something no one had dared to do until then. Bueno, Pablo Escobar. ¿Dónde está Felipe? Felipe está detenido. Escobar was patient and determined, slowly infiltrating her domain. Griselda was deeply involved in her work, but Escobar brought new ideas and a different mindset. He didn't resort to full-blown attacks against Griselda's people. Instead, he hired three professional hitmen and instructed them to strike at night, targeting and eliminating more of Griselda's associates. These were Escobar's ideas that were slowly checkmating Griselda. In this situation, Griselda, under Escobar's pressure, receives some unfortunate news. She finds out that her husband, Alberto Bravo, not only betrays her, but also steals from her. Griselda doesn't want to send anyone to kill Alberto. She decides to do it herself. And finally, in the city of Bogota, the capital of Colombia, she confronts him on the street in front of her husband. She shoots him with a Uzi gun. After killing her husband, she quickly returns to Medellin to prepare her army and stand against Escobar. A year later, she meets another man named Dario Sepulveda and marries him. Dario himself is a member of the Ochoa Brothers Cartel and is considered one of the big shots. By the year 1980, Griselda is no longer the top smuggler in Medellin, as Pablo Escobar has surpassed her. Even her husband's cartel, the Ochoa Brothers, is working for Escobar. Griselda realizes she is no longer the number one in Medellin and decides it's better to go to America. But this time, she doesn't go to New York. She goes to Miami, Florida. It is the year 1980, and Colombia is the world's largest cocaine producer, responsible for 75% of global cocaine production. Griselda establishes her roots firmly in Miami and no longer plays a chess game with Escobar. Instead, she somewhat collaborates with him. Escobar sends cocaine to Miami, and Griselda's people distribute it. Although she has come to Miami, she still carries her violence with her. She realizes that Cuban mafias are infiltrating Miami, and interestingly, within a year, she eliminates 300 of them. This woman made Miami the most dangerous city in America during those years. She uproots the Cuban mafia in Florida and creates such terror that no one dares to become her rival. During this time, Escobar is the biggest trafficker in history, bringing in tons of cocaine to the United States daily. But Griselda has done something that makes Escobar need her. During this time, she is selling one and a half tons of cocaine per month on the streets of Miami. This means that both Escobar and Griselda are profiting. Maybe you'll say that Miami had so much consumption because it was the distribution center of America, and it was distributed from there to everywhere. Griselda is at its peak, but the law of nature is such that when a fountain rises, it eventually falls. In the end, Griselda reaches the end line and slowly descends. The first enemy she found was the DEA, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. Finally, in 1985, the DEA caught Griselda. They found out that she had moved from Florida to California. On February 17, 1985, DEA agents surrounded Griselda's residence hotel, entered her room, and arrested her. When people like her are arrested, their empire collapses, and all their people realize that she is no longer their leader. She is brought to court and sentenced to 15 years in prison. You might say, only 15 years. After all the killings, 
After bringing so many drugs into America, after using so many fake passports and smuggling illegal immigrants into America, why only 15 years? When you have money, you hire the best lawyer who can bypass the law. This lady should only be tried for cocaine trafficking, not for murder, looting, or human trafficking. When Griselda enters prison, it's like entering hell because she had many enemies outside the prison who wanted her to suffer in there. For example, when one of her beloved sons, Oswaldo, entered Medellin, he was senselessly killed just to torment her. Griselda was in prison and couldn't attend her son's funeral in Medellin, but she sent a message to be read at the ceremony. In the message, she wrote that those who killed her son should be killed. However, it didn't take long before her other two sons were also killed. She had no limits as long as she had money and could do anything with it. We come to the year 2004 when Griselda has served her sentence and can be released. On the first day of her release, she buys a ticket, gets on a plane, and goes to Colombia. But the Colombians no longer recognize her. Even Pablo Escobar had been killed years before. During this time, Colombia had become somewhat more law-abiding, unlike when this lady was there. She investigated to find out where her son's killers were, but she saw that they had all been killed in the previous conflicts and there was no one left to seek revenge. That's why she bought an apartment in Medellin and lived there. Apparently, she had no more enemies to be cautious about or things to worry about. Eight years later, on September 3, 2012, the 69-year-old Griselda is buying meat at a butcher shop. Someone parks their motorcycle in front of the butcher shop, enters, pulls out their gun, and shoots this lady twice in the head. Without trying to escape, they walk towards their motorcycle and ride away. There was still one enemy left in Medellin that this lady had overlooked. Nobody knows who killed her. She earned billions and billions of dollars. In the end, this was her fate. Her sons, who were killed during her lifetime, led a life in Colombia that was somewhat like hell, and in the end, she was killed like this. A TV series has been made about her life, the series Griselda, created by Netflix. Oh